Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing Real Housewives of Atlantis Season 6 Episode 1 Review. The show starts off with Greg, Greg and Nene, they getting all their wedding presents in order and seeing what everybody even got them because this is like it's fresh, fresh off of going in from Adrian and Nene, Royal Wedding, whatever it's called, to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's happy for all the gifts, but at the same time, she's just feeling kind of sad because you know, Portia and Cordell, they going through their whole little mess with their marriage. And she's like, she seemed to be happy. She was out on that floor dropping it like it was hot, having her a good old time. So hopefully that she's doing better. You know, Greg's like, ain't everybody be like us. And she's like, yeah, but hopefully they can get this together and it don't get too, too ugly. You know how some of these... I'm, unfortunately, they have fallen to the, when you go on a reality show, your marriage ends... So I look like they the next person in line for that. So, yeah. Portia wants her marriage to Cordell to work. But she's like, he got some stuff on this list that I'm making that he needs to do. He needs to go to counseling because he got him some demons going on up inside of him. She's like, I was a good wife to him. I didn't do him wrong. And I found out he wanted a divorce on Twitter. Apparently she had asked him a week before, Cordell, do you want to get a divorce? And he was like, no, I don't want to get no divorce. So, you know, all day he ain't talking to her or nothing. She talking on her sister to get on Twitter and bam, Cordell wants to divorce Portia. Now, if that ain't about the honor is, how you gonna be living in the house with somebody? Y'all still going on as husband wife, she cooking and cleaning, whatever she do in the house, you off doing whatever you do. And you send her a tweet or you sending out a tweet saying, Hey, I'm getting a divorce. You couldn't walk up the hall and say that? Like, really, Cordell? What's like, something wrong with him? Like, last season, he was like, he didn't want her to leave nowhere, but I guess he even got around her some strong women. was like, hey, girl, that do something wrong with him. He want to keep you under your stomach at all times. You better watch him. So now he feeling some type of way he want to get divorced. I don't know the whole situation, but the way she's saying it happened is just straight out honor to me. And somebody needs to tell him by himself. If they haven't already done that. Yeah. Cynthia. When they rolled up on her daily agency and I seen her for sale sign, my first thought was, and it was probably like other people, not again, poor Cynthia and Peter, not one, another one of their businesses has failed. So I'm up there like, oh man, I thought that was going to do good, but I was wrong. Some other people might be wrong too, but she's just moving on to bigger and better. Peter has gotten her a bigger, well, a bigger warehouse. For her modeling agency, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But up pops Kenya. Ain't heard from Kenya, ain't talked to Kenya in months. But the day um, Cynthia's moving at her Bailey agency, Kenya pops up. Apparently she's been going through things and the last two months have been traumatic. Yeah. Her landlord been going to the media saying how she's not paying her bills. So now she had to get out. She's distraught. Oh no. Because nobody has reached out to her. Well, most of the girls on the cast, <laughs> you have pissed off, so they're not going to look at you. Of course, she going through her thing with Cordell trying to break up with her. You just bowed out wanting to get with Apollo, so for surely, Phaedra's not going to, you know, come to your tied to patch show and it's gonna be all right boo boo nene she was off planning her wedding which you didn't come to but we gonna get to that in a minute cynthia's like okay i ain't got time for you can you <laughs> did i did cynthia know she was going through all this trouble but it's cynthia and this kenya thing can i guess she went to Ken cynthia because cynthia's gonna be more sympathetic to her if it's and he's like, oh, boo, you did everybody wrong, but here's what's going to happen. I'm doing this white party, you going to come. I didn't invite everybody. Hopefully you can, you know, men's offenses if not, then that's not really my problem. I tried to do something, but if it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. But remember, you put this on yourself the way you was acting last season. Now, I'm paraphrasing. Fade your head, Apollo. I don't know. I, just, I watched it twice. I watched it last night, then I watched it again. I don't know something about them they it was like a lot of tension I felt a lot of tension between them they didn't got their new house they renovated it 
Carlos out there trying to get things done. Phaedra just had a baby like two months ago. She's ready to get things done. But it's like their interaction, I don't know if it's just because sleep deprived with a new baby and renovating, but some, they they not mentioned like they was before. And I was feeling a little tense between them. And I was like, I don't know if that's just me feeling that way or other people feeling that way. Because like, what's going on with y'all? She turns, she's like, I gotta get back to classes, I gotta embalm some bodies, I gotta go get somebody out of jail. We get Miss Houston. Matter of fact, when is this gonna get done? He want a koi pond, she wants something to be like she in Paris. Yes, they're going through things. And I have a question. Why and now I know when say she was had emergency C section with her last baby. I know that you probably not all the way in it. But why is it her version of the events of meeting her new son are totally different than what happened? Apparently to her, he was all nice and quiet. He came out the womb screaming. She up her and took the baby. It's all cold up. Paula was like, oh, what you doing? I'm trying to check all his parts. Okay, I'm pretty sure the nurse and Apollo did this. As soon as they scooped him at your womb and put him on that table to check him out. So maybe she was, you know, she under that anesthesia and she, you know, kind of, you know, there. I'm hoping that was it. Yeah. I hope Apollo and Faith you make it, but I don't know. I felt some tension from Dog on this first episode, so maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong. Ty wants Candy to set a date and, you know, start planning a wedding. Candy can't do that because Mama Joyce mad. Mama Joyce mad because she's feeling some kind of way about Ty. And then we have yet another man that Miss Mama Jewish is not like. Now, I thought her attire was kind of cool, but now she's looking at him as an opportunist. Candy feels like, I don't know why everybody say that I'm a sugar mama. I wrote no scrubs. So, you know, you may not be practicing what you're preaching. But Mama Joy, she feels some kind of way. Tara's like, we, we need to get this together. It's me, you, and your mama talk. Cause I want to get married. You want to get married. We can't be having Mama Joy just be acting like that. She was like, I don't like taking care of nobody. He don't like taking care of nobody. So, it's something that Mama Joy is going through. But it looks like at the end of the season, we're going to find out. Yeah. Horsha leaves the lawyer, because I forgot what he was called. He's some kind of lawyer, man. She goes over to her mama's house. She's all up in arms, all distraught. What happened between the litigations? That's what I'm going to call it. If I'm wrong, drop it low and let me know the real definition. First, we're going to cut this off. Why, when she first walked in, there was already three like glasses set out, and it was just only her, her mom and her sister there? I don't know if anybody else caught that. I don't know if this was a stage scene or not, but I was wondering why there was three glasses on the table. Of course, it just freshly walked in. But we're going to look past that right now. She was surprised that Cordell just flat out told the truth, but you know, he was under oath. He admit, yeah. When she didn't come home, you know, at a decent amount of time, I locked the door. I did it and I do it again. Now, I'm not saying he said that, but that's what I'm getting. I'm like, really? And then to find out when she had her miscarriage, he came by the hospital once. Like, what was you out doing? That you couldn't be there for your wife when she was going through this traumatic experience. Now, I knew Cordell was a low-down dog, but I didn't know he was that low of a low-down dog. I'm like, really? What's wrong with you? See, I told y'all something wrong with Cordell. Like, I don't know if he can share, if he has compassion to anybody but himself. Like, this, this your wife. Not just some random woman. Your wife. Been married for a few years. She has miscarriage and you off doing whatever. And she's there, you know, having to deal with it by herself. Now, I'm pretty sure her mom and her sister and everybody was there. But I'm pretty sure she would want her husband there. But she was going off somewhere else. Really, Cordell? It's making my head hurt just thinking about it. So I'm just going to not do it. Oh, yeah. She even insinuates that he's gay. And that went through me for a loop. Now, I kind of heard some, some few months ago that the only reason he got married with her because he got caught in the car with some man doing a little something, something. I didn't, I didn't want to believe because, you know, some there would be lies out there and everybody, anybody, just about anybody and everybody. But some family members of her told her, 
And she, you know, asked him, and I guess he put it in a way that she can understand. <laughs> Shout out to Forrest Gump. Anyways, he, you know, made her feel comfortable about the situation. Like, no, I'm not gay. But she kind of felt like if you didn't want all of this, then what did you want? Yeah. We're at Cynthia's new Bailey Agency open school. She invited all the girls. It's a white party. Everybody having a good time. Candy got to leave because she got to go do candy coat at night. So it's just like, you know, I came to show my support, but I got to go. Candy walks in with Miss Lawrence and immediately Nene's like, I need to get the hell away from this woman. Peter, come show me the tour. Phaedra and Derek Jaden moved off. So, what are you doing? As soon as Kenya walk in, the party scatters. So Kenya and Nene finally meet up. Kenya, she's still in some type of way that Nene invited Walter to her wedding. That is Nene's wedding. If she wanted to invite a dog to the wedding, that was her prerogative, which she did, which was her family dog. It didn't matter who it was. She could have invited your mama there. I shouldn't say that. But she could have invited just about anybody there. She could have found out anybody and inv invited them. It's her wedding. That's what she wanted to do. And you to be mad about the fact that she invited Walter? Well, first of all, Boo Boo, you wasn't even there. Greg is friends with Walter. Nene likes Walter. Therefore, Walter came to the wedding. And that's how it goes. You invited Walter in the mix as your boo last season. And now that people like him, you want them to just disassociate with him just because y'all not together? Really, can you? Why are you going to tell Nene that I felt some kind of way because you let Walter rich your wealthy? It was Nene's wedding. He had a good time. She ain't got no problem with him. She may have a problem with you, but she don't have a problem with him. Greg likes him. Shoot, even Fred's like, hey, I already seen Walter's social events. I call him on the phone all the time. I ain't gonna stop good. <laughs> she probably do a little bit more because, you know, she don't like Kenyans. You know, that the hurt nerves. But yeah, she's like, yeah, we cool with Walter. And she's not gonna chase a Nene down, hold Nene back, grab Nene's ear. Now, that would have been the time that needed to swing on her. Now, I'm not all for violence, but she put her hand on Nene's ear, which I think that gives Nene all right to slap her. It's not bullying. You didn't put your hands on me. That legally is an assault. Yes. I get in on my judge method so I know these things. Yes. But King is like, you are too, too much. You mad, one, because there nobody, wasn't nobody there for you. And now you're mad because she invited Walter. And she's like, I was going through some things and you weren't there for me. And then you're like, you didn't come to my wedding. You didn't RSVP. This is the first time I'm seeing your tail since I invited you. And now you're here getting mad because who I did invite? Who did come? Really? Well, I was going through an eviction and Nene said it good. She's like, surely not this one who's been in movies and has DVDs and all this production is surely not homeless. <laughs> Nene, girl, I was cracking up on that, but Kenny didn't have that to say. Like, now she's like, she felt uncomfortable to walk this world, but even though she wasn't there anyway, like, if Nene's going to have a party, she's going to invite whoever she wants. And she's not going to worry about how Kenya feels about the situation. Because what? It is her party. Yeah. So, that was the gist of the episode. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment or a video response. And like always, I want to thank my subscribers and the people who watch my videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T, signing off. Have a good one.